astonished I forgot what I was doing and was just taken aback. Why are you so strong? It's all I'm good for after all. That girl who replied didn't have one thing you could call an expression laid out on her face. It was like she was wearing an emotionless mask with only specks of blood splattered here and there. Why did you save me? Well, just because. Just because. Ikusaba san nodded and dropped her gaze down to her feet. After a few moments of silence, she gently opened her mouth again. For example, it's like a video game RPG. Video game? It's like that? Like a straight for RPG or something. The people who live in that world, it looks like they have their own will. But just looks like that. In the end, they are just scripts to act in a way convenient for the game. It's the same with the protagonist. It's just that the protagonist doesn't even realize what he is. What are you trying to say? Um, well, my fight with the model eyes wasn't a coincidence. Actually, it's the same with the model eyes coming to the neurology laboratory. And the same with removing the unnecessary kirikiri son from the scenario. Everything was determined right from the beginning. What, what do you mean by determined? The same goes for me. I'm just moving along as script with her scenario. Moving accordingly to her will, only to prevent the scenario from taking the wrong path. Her? I'm talking about Junko and Oshima, of course. At that moment, I, it felt like my blood froze. As expected, everything returns to Junko and Oshima. Everything from game me or Matsuda kun involved. It's all because of that horrible girl. Wait, what? At that point, I suddenly realized it. Then you're working with Junko and Oshima? As I glared her blamingly, Ikusaba-san hesitantly was fine as if embarrassed while working with her. It's more like she's my sister. Huh? It was too sudden of a confession. Nuko, Ikusaba, and Junko and Oshima are sisters. Wait, that's even worse than just working together, is it? But even though we're sisters and we're connected by blood, all of that doesn't mean anything to her. After all, all that girl looks for is despair. Other people despair her own despair. That's all that exists for her. All of a sudden, it looked like Ikusaba's son's eyes were gazing far away. That's why whoever it may be, whatever situation it may be, whatever world it may be, it just all means nothing to her unless she is dealing with despair. That's the world of the girl known as Super High School Level Despair Junko and Oshima. What the? But that's ridiculous. Yes, it's ridiculous. That's what Junko and Oshima is. Hearing her response, I felt a new sensation of dread. This time, it was creeping up from my feet bit by bit. Yes, she really is ridiculous. To the point of despair, she's the lowest, worst sister ever. But that's why I can't leave her alone. That's why I have to help her. After all, I'm the only one who can understand her. <laughs> then looking at the face Ikusaba-san showed me, I was suddenly taken aback. The ever so emotionless face was exact and smiling. I don't know if she is attracting despair or despair is attracting her, but she has lived her whole life with this 
despair by her side. She lived with the most in despair. That's why she began looking for despair in others. She loved to enjoy pushing people into despair. But you know that's normal. It's the same as someone being cursed by misfortune, born into hatred for those who aren't. But what's special about her was that she wants to enjoy inflicting despair onto herself. That's how the link to despair began. As she chased down to despair, she pushed it onto others on the way. Doing so, it caused her to desire falling into despair even more. And because of that train to despair, the super high school level despair was born. While she spoke, it was like she fell into a fever. The expressions on her face turned into ecstasy. It was so completely absorbed that it would have been hard for anybody to think of it as anything but a joke. But I understood that this was real. It might have been because the memories of Junko and Oshima inside me led to that conclusion. Hey, you don't get it, right? I don't think anybody else... I don't think anybody could, but you know, only I can understand it. Could be right back. Consumed by ecstasy, even Kusaba son's butts become, I mean, began to become wagged. Only I am able of under, understanding her. That's why she needs me. She still hasn't realized that, but maybe she is only pretending not to realize. Oof, oof. That's because she's so shy. Oof, oof, oof. Seeing this intoxicated Ikusaba-san continue to talk like that repelled me. I knew that she definitely didn't have normal feelings for Junko and Oshima, but that sort of thing shouldn't have anything to do with me. That's right, it has nothing to do with me. Without thinking, I started speaking. Eh? It's not like I know anything about you or Junko and Oshima, that sort of thing. Doesn't have anything to do with me. The last thing I was saying, I quickly apologize. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. At that moment, Ikusaba son's face turned pale. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Getting more and more into it, I begin to bow my head as well. You don't need to apologize that much. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Even so, I continued to apologize to the point where she almost felt bad. And then I realized how tired I was. Putting everything aside, I was tired. Tired from the confrontation of the model eyes, the conversation with ikusaba son about Junko and Oshima, and above all, I just wanted to see Matsudaku. That's right, I want to see Matsudakun. Hey, it's okay if I leave now, right? With eagerness strong enough to blow away my tiredness, I felt like I had to get out of this place and without waiting for an answer. Anyway, thanks for helping me. I'll be leaving now. Leaving those words just as I start running off. Oh wait, I still haven't told you the whereabouts of Yasuki Matsuda. Immediately breaking to a stop, I turned around and faced Ikusaba-san. If you don't know where he is, you probably won't be able to see him. How do you know where Matsuda-kun is? I immediately went up closer to him. More importantly, if you know, then please tell me. <laughs> But as I approached her, I was suddenly taken aback. Ikusaba-san's face was radically different from earlier. 
a crimson expression. It felt like she was a sniper in a battlefield aiming at a target. I don't like it when things go towards this direction. After getting along so well, but this is part of the scenario, so I have no choice. For murmuring the sentence as if she was about to cry, she shot her freezing glare towards me. In order for me to tell you Yasuki Matsuda's about an exchange is required. I exchange? Ikusaba something point towards the motorized lying on the floor and spoke with a low voice. Those people lying laying over there still don't know about the last remaining member of the student council. The student council president being murdered. I'm sure if they found out they would fall into despair. Despair strong enough to push them to even die for the sake of revenge. What, what are you saying? My voice filled with tension. Even I understood what she was talking about. If you leave them be, I'm sure they will go and kill Yatsuki Matsuda. Kill, 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 kill. Soon those words began to spin around in my head. Why does Matsuda Kun need to die? The student council president's murder has nothing to do with him. That's not true. It does have something to do with him. Ikusawa san shakes her head. Because Yatsuki Matsuda murdered the student council president. Murdered, 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 murdered. That's why we'll exchange. While saying that, she took something out of her pocket and threw it towards my feet. Work your hearts for a sake. If you really love Yatsuki Matsuda, then you'd work your hearts for him. I dropped my eyes towards my feet. Sitting on the moist ground was a knife with Hope's Peak Academy's emblem engraved onto it. The moment I laid eyes on it, my heart began beating with an amount of blood strong enough to break a vessel. To seize hope for both him and yourself, you must work at your hearts. I can't be expected to kill, 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 kill. You, you can't be serious, right? No, I'm serious. Without time for thinking, she immediately responded, You will overcome Hope's Peak Academy here. With the sacrifices of the Madras, you will obtain true hope. That is the scenario Junko Enoshima has assigned to you. What is this? The scenario Junko Enoshima assigned? Why? Why am I forced to do this? The severe confusion gave me a fever. I was attacked with immense dizziness and ringing in my ears. Why, 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 why? And then I realized I was gazing up at the sky. Thick gray clouds began covering the sky, making it like only this moist, gloomy garden was in the middle of the night, enveloped in silence. While I stared at the sky, absent-mindedly, I could feel the black, hopeless emotions inside me bubbling up like the toxic sludge from underground sewers. It dried up like dead grass. This is... I stopped and thought with my hazy head. This is despair. To overcome this despair and seize hope. Whose voice was that? Was it mine? Ikusaba's son's? Or was it? But all I had nothing to do with me. Suddenly, I reached out my hand towards the silver knife. And then to slice away the dark fog of despair, I wielded the knife in a trance. Doing so, I felt the texture of flesh. Beyond the knife standing into the motherized eyes, I could feel the blade stabbing all the way through the skin and muscle. 
the flesh blood's going out, the cries of death, goosebumps spread across my skin, and I instantly felt the pain of my stomach's insides knotting together. Despite that, I stabbed, overcome despair for the sake of seizing hope for Matsuda-kun and I. I stabbed and 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 st stabbed. I could hear my screams coming from far away. They were screams from my broken out. Ah, ah. I then returned to myself. From there, as if to shake off the delusions floating up into my head, I soon screamed once again. I, I can't do it. From my hand was rich from Reaching out towards the knife, my head ached from fear of the simulation that just flew by my mind. I won't do it. I have no reason to do this. Ah, uh, um, then I heard the puzzled voice of Ikusaba-san coming from above. You know that if you don't overcome despair here, you won't be able to seize hope, right? I... I... I can't do that, I screamed while sobbing. Hope and despair, that's just what you, Ojunko and Oshima have been talking about, right? It has nothing to do with me. My throat began to burn up from screaming so much. And my tears and snot mixed together as I crouched towards the gown. Uh, help me! Help me, Matsuda-kun! As I... As if bleeding, I continued to cry. Grasping my head, I continued to shamelessly cry. Help me! Help me, Matsuda-kun! 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 Then an even further puzzle voice could be heard from Ikusaba-san. Um, I don't really know what to do in these kinds of situations. But anyway, I'll tell you where Yasuki Matsuda is, huh? In surprise, I lift my head up, huh? If you saw some was in surprise as well, probably because my face was so unsightly from crying. You'll tell me? But if things end at this way, Junko-chan will get mad at me. Hearing that, I scrubbed my face with the sleeves of my uniform. And once again, firmly stood up on my two feet. I then slapped my cheeks to focus and face Ikusaba-san with a question. Then tell me, where is Matsuda-kun? Ikusaba-san. Then responded with a light voice. Um, Yasuki Matsuda is at the ex-school building. Once again, the intense itchiness attacked my head, ex-school building. I felt like I heard those words not too long ago somewhere, but it, has no, it was no time to be dealing with that itchiness right now. Guys, so if I go to the ex-school building, I'll meet Matsuda-kun, right? Yes, that place is supposed to be the planned climax. I'm able to meet Matsuda-kun with that thought in mind. A mysterious power seems to come up from deep within me. My screaming and shouting and falling into despair from before seemed to all be a lie. This is... I felt myself burning with energy. This is hope. Thanks. I'll be taking off then. I then bowed my head towards Ikusaba-san. I had no reason to bow my head towards the sister of the horrible... Junko and Oshima, who was assisting her in that messed up plan. But this might be the power of hope as well. Alright, good luck then. I'll take care of cleaning up what's left here. Ikusaba-san spoke while looking around at the motorized laying out After I clean this up, I'll go and help Kirigiri-san. Then I'll remove Kirigiri-san from this scenario. Then everything will go along just like the scenario, so leave the rest to me. 
I was tired of hearing her repeatedly talk about the scenario towards the very end. That's why with a short bye, I immediately ran off. But as soon as I dashed off, I suddenly noticed something. While running, I turned around and saw Ikusaba's son absent-mindedly standing still. Lying around the world, there was four modulized, but I felt like there was something missing there. But I couldn't remember that, but it wasn't the time to think about something like that, and I continued to run straight ahead. That's why I don't have time to be turning around. I was heading towards Hope's Peak's Hope, Hope's Peak Academy's North District's ex school building, even without looking at Ryoko Otonashi's notebook. The path towards my destination somehow flowed, flowed it up into my head. It looks like I was pretty troubled. Troubled to the point that I couldn't handle it. But if it's to me, Matsuda kun, then it'll all be okay. I'll be able to get rid of this easy uneasiness. That's because. Be right back. That's because if I meet Matsuda-kun, everything will turn back to normal. My head will become normal again, and then I'll be able to return to those peaceful days with Matsuda-kun. Whatever there may be, whatever may happen, I'll return to those peaceful days of receiving treatment from Matsuda-kun. That is my ideal happy ending. What I was heading for was it the ex school building. It was towards that happy ending. Heading towards that happy ending, I went as fast as I could.
Huh? Rain? I know it's the ball entering the central garden from the back garden of the biology laboratory. It seemed like rain began falling at some point. The rain wasn't too hot, but it was strong enough for some of it hitting the trees and grass to be heard. But this level of rain won't be enough to stop me. As the cold rain engulfed my bike, I aimed towards the lined up school buildings and dashed off from the East District Central Garden. Due to either the rain or because it was possibly during lecturing hours, there weren't many students around in the Central Garden. Either way, there were students running as if fleeing from the rain, and others who were calmly walking under umbrellas. As I ran ahead at full speed without any kind of protection from the elements, I must have gotten some odd looks towards my direction. This kind of thing, I would normally have nothing to do with me. But for some reason, this particular time, I felt a bit annoyed. I felt a violent irritation develop as those people standing from a safe place watched me as if examining some kind of swelling tumor. Even so, I continued to tell myself that it had nothing to do with me. As I went straight through the central garden, at that rate, I eventually exited the East District and ended up at the Central Plaza. And then once again, I caught sight of groups of students. Most likely, they were heading back to their dormitories in the South District. Different colored umbrellas in hand. They seemed to enjoy chatting with each other as they slowly walked down the pavement. Glancing at them from the back of my eye, I dashed off from the pavement. There probably isn't any clear cut road leading to the North District's ex school building, so unless I cut through the Central Plaza, I won't be able to proceed. The grass at my feet was wet. And there were poles developing here and there as well. Reaching the now half vacant North District, my figure soon disappeared from others' vis other people's vision. Seeing how there won't even be many people in this area on a rainy day like this, the grass at my feet became more and more there as I could see it. And the number of trees began to decrease as well. Eventually, the land presented itself to be almost like a wasteland. After the progressing through the wasteland for a bit, an artificial structure came into view. That's I see. As I looked up at the building, I began to slow down my running pace. Hopes he could count me at school building. Just looking at it, solemn appearance did give the impression that it was some abandoned building, but not having done so for quite a while, I checked out my Ryoko Otonashi notebook. It seemed that this building had already fulfilled its role at almost half a year ago. If that was true, then it would be strange for this building to still seem like it was used not too long ago. But the tall fences that surrounded the building seemed to shout that it was already finished. Plates were even stuck on the fences detailing Hope's Peak Academy North District Plan Construction Land. Do not enter. While straightening out my unsteady breath, I walked at a slow pace around the fence. To enter the ex school building, it seemed that there was no other way than to climb over these, but then once again, I could feel that itchiness in my head. Still not used to it, my face grimaced, and then suddenly a thought flew into my head. Speaking of which, I remember hearing that there were security guards around this area. Even though I didn't look at my notebook, I remember that. Surprise! 
by the turn of events, I came to a halt without thinking, and then another wave of surprise washed over me. A number of security guards surrounded me. Eh, uh huh? In a panic, I frantically looked around me, speechless and emotionless, almost like if they were lifeless mannequins. All they were doing was simply looking straight at me. Um, I'm not really anyone suspicious or anything. Wait, what? Without listening to my excuses, the security guards split up and dispersed. Ignoring what should have been an obvious intruder, they continued their patrol and left. Uh-huh. Um, being left behind, I stood there, shocked speechless, and then met eyes with the only remaining security guard. He's young. The face of the helmet was of a high school. No matter how you looked at it, his mouth twisted into something like a smile. And he brought out a shining object. It was a medal. The medal had a bear mascot engraved upon it. It was half white and half black. It was a peculiar bear mascot. If I recall correctly, that was it was called Manukuma. It happened again. Without even looking back at the notebook, that thought flowed up into my head by itself. It was almost like someone else's thought was pushed into my head. It was an eerie sensation. Is this what remembering is? But this wasn't the time to be analyzing myself. Suddenly, the right arm of the security guard unexpectedly extended outward. It seemed like he was pointing to something with that right arm. Following that direction with my eyes, I was led to a small opening. One could crawl into between the fences. But why would the security guard tell me something like that? The moment I returned my eyes towards the security guard, he was already walking away. Not exactly sure why I absentmindedly gazed as figure moving further and further away. As another thought suddenly flew into my brain again, it looked like I remember yet another thing. In the end, everyone is just conveniently moving along the scenario. Suddenly, I felt some kind of heavy fear pressing on me from the back of my head, but it will all be alright. I desperately convinced myself. Anyway, if it's to meet Matsuda-kun, then everything will be alright. That's why I believed. I believed in Matsuda-kun. I believed in my feelings for Matsuda-kun. I believed in the role of myself and Matsuda-kun. By honestly believing in him, I flew away all my uneasiness and then moved forward with renewed vigor. If I mispronounce the last word, I'm sorry. Five more chapters of Dog and Wampa Zero.